Malachi, well, as 7 News continues to recognize Black History Month, we turn our attention now to a group of women who are collectively making history in the Palmetto State. 7 News' Kimberly Brown spent time with nine female lawmakers who are changing the face of politics in South Carolina. Outside the Capitol in Columbia stands a monument dedicated to African American history. They talk about and look at the slave trade and what many African Americans had to go through. They also look at even the Civil War. Many of them fought in that. They talk about Jim Crow laws and segregation, Brown versus the Board of Education, and they even talk about voting rights. Well, today we pause to look at nine women who work inside this building who are making history themselves. As 2020 begins, the vision is clear for these women as they serve together in the South Carolina House of Representatives. They're breaking barriers and stereotypes. I think we've taken uh, the, the House by a storm. I mean, to have all of us, we're all um, seasoned, uh, we're all witty, we have a lot of intelligence. We live in a male-dominated um, world, and it has been for a long time, but as you can see, the ties are changing. These nine elected officials are affectionately called the Divine Nine, the name given during a ceremony at St. Mark United Methodist Church in Taylor's, where they were honored for their service. This Divine Nine reminds me of a time when there were no African American women or men in the South Carolina House. And the fact that we are here today gives us hope for what can be done to move this state forward. They represent nearly every corner of the state, from Chesterfield to McCormick to Charleston and Greenville, and many municipalities in between. For some, getting into office wasn't easy. I challenged a 12-year incumbent here in the state, and um, you know, it wasn't an easy election at the end. When the dust settled, there were 52 votes separating us, and um, but I am here, and uh, this is my 12th year. For others, the desire to serve outweighed conventional thinking. My father asked me, do you know what it pays? I said, no. He said, do you know what you do? I said, no. He said, do you know it's a thankless job? I said, no, but I'm going to do it anyway. But no matter the journey or the cost, all understand the gravity of their positions. I don't think my community really knew what they were missing as it relates to what happens here at the State House and what, what can come back to the community. And um, I'm just overjoyed that I have the opportunity to go back to them and show them and tell them. The bond is real. The support, guidance, and shared wisdom, priceless. We have our own individual look, our own individual style, but when it comes to doing good for the people of the state, we're all on one page. I feel that I have now eight sisters <laughs> who have my back and I don't care what happens, that we will be there for each other. That unwavering support extends from the newly elected. My most challenging part about serving is the fact that I'm a single mother of five. So juggling my work life, my children, and my role here at the State House is definitely very challenging. <laughs> to the more seasoned officers. Who served the longest? That would be me. <laughs> Let us help him. Representative Gilda Cobb Hunter, initially elected nearly 30 years ago, serves the Orangeburg community. Out of 124 members in the House, she's ranked number one, meaning she's the longest serving member. If you are in a position to be in these seats, then you need to give voice and be a voice for those who have no voice. It's a message lawmakers take to heart by sponsoring and supporting bills that speak to the issues affecting their communities. For me, it's um, pay equity. Um, yes. I've sponsored that bill. It has not moved out of this chamber, um, and that's disappointing um, because equal pay for equal work is just fundamental fairness. The one that I'm most uh, proud of is my lactation support bill, which uh, gives um, break time to mothers to be able to express and pump their milk in the birthplace, I'm sorry, in the workplace. That bill has bipartisan support, now making its way through the Senate. Representative Robinson Simpson is following and hoping for the passage of the school to jail pipeline bill, which would take a closer look at the juvenile justice laws in the state and propose changes to the system to help troubled youth. This group has no regrets, only messages of encouragement for the younger versions of themselves and all who will listen. I would tell my younger self, uh, never underestimate yourself.
love for Christ does pay off. It's important to, to have relationships with people. I would say keep striving, keep striving. I think I would say to my 15, 16 year old self, stay focused, this is gonna get better. This too shall pass. Be willing to take a risk. I'm here to inspire those like me who simply care about their community and want to get in rather than being a victim of the change, but that want to control some of the measures that, that affect how we live. We need women, particularly women of color, running at local levels. We need to build a bench. We need city council, county council, school boards, all elected positions. You need to look at us and see yourself. This is the first time in the state's history that nine African-American women have been elected to serve in the House of Representatives at the same time, all looking to make change, all willing to make a difference. That's our Kimberly Brown reporting there. To find out more about those elected officials in her story, you'll find it on WSPA.com.